G'day from Australia, this is Dr. Casey Parker of the Broom Docs podcast and blog, and huge thanks to Dr. Katrin Hariska for inviting me to speak at the Sweets Conference. It's really amazing to be able to cross the globe and speak to you guys from the other side of the world. So, I got to know Katrin over the last couple of years through the online medical education community, and it's been really great to learn all about how you guys do care in Sweden and how it is different in a lot of ways, how it's the same as it is here in Australia. So I'm not really an emergency doc, I'm a little bit different and I thought I'd spend a few minutes introducing myself and I'd love to hear your questions and thoughts. If you haven't checked out the blog, here it is, it's at broomdocs, broomdocs.com or you can catch me on Twitter at the handle broomdocs. I've also recently started work with the boys from the Ultrasound Podcast, teaching at the Ultrasound Leadership Academy online, which is really great. And there's even a few Scandinavians involved, and I've been really enjoying talking to people all over the world with this great new innovation. So check it out if you haven't already. So a little bit of geography first, just so that you know exactly where we are. Um, I'm an Australian. I work in a town called Broome, which is a medium-sized town in the far north part of Western Australia. It's in the tropics, so we're closer to Indonesia than we are to most of the people in Australia. We have an amazing place to live and work in Broome, so it's one of those great tourist meccas of Australia. People come from all over to spend their time sitting on the beach, and juxtaposed right next to that is some of the sickest people in Australia, so about half of my patients are Aboriginal people, local indigenous people, and they tend to carry a huge disease burden. The sort of diseases that we rarely see outside of Africa or other parts of the third world are pretty much always present in the Aboriginal population. So it's quite an interesting place to work and has many challenges as well. One of the major challenges that we faced is distance. So Broome is a long way from everywhere And we're sort of the secondary referral hospital. We collect all the sick people from the northern part of Western Australia. And then we sort of work out what's going on with them. And some of them we can treat locally. But anyone that needs subspecialist care, so people that need brain surgery, chest surgery, uh, any sort of advanced interventional stuff, need to go south. And that means flying people to Perth which is about 2,000 kilometres away, or to put that in perspective for you sitting in Stockholm, that would be flying all of your heart attack patients to, say, Milan in Italy. It's a long, long way away, and the logistics involved in transferring many patients great distances and the decision-making that go around that really do sharpen one's practice and make you really think about how it is that we do medicine. So... My specialty, I'm what we call a generalist or a rural generalist. And this is a specialty that only really exists in some parts of the world, Australia being one, uh, South Africa it's quite popular, remote parts of Canada, and I assume that there's also some generalists over there in Scandinavia and Sweden as well. It's a great specialty, but it's also one that comes with a lot of challenges. The basic philosophy that we carry as generalists, we work in a generally in a hospital environment, sometimes in private practice, and we are expected and need to be able to have the skills to treat anybody that walks in the door, no matter what's wrong with them, from the common cold through to the stroke, from uh, minor medical illness right through to psychotic depression uh, and all the obstetrics and stuff that goes with it. We need to be able to treat them anywhere we do get involved in pre-hospital care from time to time and it can be quite difficult when you're a long way, long way from help. And we do it at all times of year as well. So Broome's lucky to have a tropical atmosphere but that does come with severe tropical cyclones and other major meteorological disasters which do sometimes leave us isolated for long periods of time which can be quite challenging and also tend to leave us with some quite dramatic injuries as well. And we also do things anyhow. So being out here a long way from home, it does rely on us to be innovative and 
change the way we do care to optimise patient care and use what resources we have available. And so that basically means that necessity is the mother of invention. We have to try new things, find novel ways of treating our patients in order to try and achieve the same quality of care that they might get in the city. Because unfortunately, critical illness and severe sickness doesn't respect geography. Our patients get sick no matter where they happen to be. Alright, so what is it that I actually do? Well, about half of my time I do the same thing that you guys do. I'm an emergency doctor. I work in a small but busy emergency department supervising junior doctors and treating anything from minor ailments, minor injuries, right through to full resuscitative care. About one day a week I do an elective anesthesia list and this can be anything from straight up and down elective anesthesia through to trauma anesthesia, uh, paediatric anesthesia and quite a bit of obstetric anesthesia as well. We also have a critical care unit so we have about four beds what we call high dependency and then we have one room which is a sort of single room ICU which we keep patients in anywhere from a few hours through to a few days. We have a amazing internal medicine specialty here in Broome. We see a lot of diseases that most people in the Western world would only read about in textbooks. Things like severe end-stage diabetes, uh, renal disease, rheumatic heart disease. These things are all endemic in our local indigenous population. And so we see some really terrible diseases in what is really a first world setting. We have a very large paediatric population and these people, these kids also suffer the same problems that their parents do. So we see a lot of kids with severe infections and that seems to be a mainstay of our paediatric care. We do a lot of obstetrics. Um, obstetrics is one of those disciplines that really tests your mettle and we do have specialist obstetric services in Broome now which is wonderful, but that also brings for the more and more high-risk population of patients. So we're seeing a, a lot of uh, high-risk obstetrics taking place in our small and stretched obstetric unit. And of course that comes with it neonatology, which is my personal fear. It's something that we do a lot of. It's something that we do, though not enough, to be really good at and it's one of those areas where technical skills can be really tricky to maintain when you're dealing with such small children and you're doing it not frequently enough really to be a guru. And we do a lot of psychiatry as well. Uh, our Aboriginal population are unfortunately afflicted with a lot of psychiatric illness and this is something that is very challenging for all of us and can sometimes require very difficult and logistically challenging transfers over very long distances in small aeroplanes which is also as you can imagine challenging but at the base of all of that we're all general practitioners so we're trained as office GPs and then we go out into the world and do a heap of other stuff so I hope that gives you a bit of a picture as to what it is that we do here in Broome and personally from my point of view the sort of things that I'm really interested in are trauma. It's something that we see a lot of and we have to be able to deal with in the first instance. And we don't really have dedicated surgical trauma services here in Broome. So there's, we, do, we spend a lot of time keeping patients going until they can get to a place where they can get definitive care. So the ongoing resuscitation of trauma patients is a pet topic of mine. Sepsis is also something I'm very interested in. I spend a lot of time looking at people that have severe illnesses, immunocompromised, bad diabetes, and we spend a lot of time resuscitating these people, trying to optimise their care. And as time goes on and we get better and better at this, we're sending fewer and fewer of these people out, and it's really a very challenging area. Bedside ultrasound is something that has helped with both trauma and sepsis. I've started teaching this and have been learning this myself over the last five years, and I think this is something that's revolutionised my practice and I think it has the potential to revolutionise your practice as well, working in emergency departments. And the reason I'm really involved in all of this is because I have a passion for education 
and that's how I came to invent the Room Docs blog and podcast, and that's how I got to know Katrin and get involved in the online education all over the world. Yeah. All right, that's enough from me. I'd love to hear your questions. I'd love to have a bit of a chat about any of those topics, and I can't wait to see you on the Hangout shortly. Okay, see ya.